Um, I'm very excited to be here. I live in Austin, Texas, so made a nice, nice trip up. Um, I was in, I was, uh, last week I was at WordCamp Scranton and WordCamp Boston doing the same talk. Um, so y'all are getting a, a nice evolved version. Um, so it, it, it should be good. Um, I'm not gonna use the mic just because I have a pretty loud voice anyway, so might as well just use, use that. Yeah. Uh, if you really want me to, yes. So, all right. You, you got it. So here's the deal. Um, because I'm a, I'm a, is it on? I think it's on. 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 There we go. So let me apologize in advance. Um, because I'm a uh, white kid from the suburbs in the 90s, I watched a lot of uh, gangster rap. And basically, by the time I, a microphone was per first put in my hands ever, um, my natural thing was to just go like this. <laughs> and so all my being, I fight to hold it like this. But as soon as I get wrapped up in my presentation, it's going to go straight back to like this. So, yeah, yeah, I want to just warn everybody, that's uh, kind of how it's going to go. So, I will literally do my best to do this, but I, I mean it, like, probably in two minutes, I'm just going to be up here like this. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's plagued me all my life, but what are you going to do? All right, cool. So, uh, you can follow me on Twitter, at slides out later. Um, yeah, let's dig right in. So, there I am. Uh, there was me with, my, like, my 20s haircut. Um, I currently work at WP Engine, which is a managed WordPress host. Um, if you, uh, since this is the all users group, um, if you haven't heard it yet, this, this WordCamp, definitely get your site to a managed WordPress platform because they do a lot of the things that will surprise you about WordPress for you. It'll be a lot easier. Um, there's tons of them, just go do your research, they're great. Um, but anyways, I'm the director of customer experience operations, so I care so much about our customers and our uh, kind of support employees and make sure that they have everything they need to do their job to provide the world-class support that we are known for. Um, that's one of the reasons why I did this talk, um, because at WP Engine, I am in charge of WordPress upgrades across our entire platform. Um, and so I have a lot of knowledge around that, and I said, you know what, I want to give back to the community. I want to make sure people understand what upgrades are all about, why they're important. Before that, um, I was the senior manager of cloud operations at Rackspace Hosting, so I have a, a good hosting background. Um, and then I went to, uh, I got a, my bachelor's in business management from UTSA. That's like the UNC of Asheville for the University of Texas, um, University of Texas, San Antonio. So, why should you listen to me? Well, I started it off. Um, I own the entire WordPress upgrade process at WP Engine. Um, I've been upgrading WordPress since version 3.5. Um, for some of you, that might not be a long time, but it's really like two and a half years, so it kind of is a long time, considering WP Engine's only been a company for five years. Um, I've handled every upgrade deferral request for the last two plus years, and what that is, is any time a customer says, I can't upgrade my WordPress version for whatever reason, they would contact me and tell me their reason. And I would have a conversation with them and try and help them get to the point where they could upgrade it and understand it. So I've heard literally thousands of reasons why someone can't upgrade their site. Um, and a lot of them are hooey. Um, but we'll talk about that a little later. Um, and at WP Engine, we've performed over a million upgrades. Um, just while I'm there, it's probably two million uh, since before I was even there. But yeah, we've got a, a lot of experience upgrading WordPress. So quick disclaimer, um, my advice is based on my experience and what I've seen work for customers. Um, really, that kind of just leads to every site is unique. So I'm talking in some generalities, but these generalities have worked for hundreds of thousands of sites, but every site is unique. Um, I'm going to give you some rules here. There's most likely an exception to every rule, uh, mainly because of number two. Um, and then to do this, what I'm going to kind of walk you through, you're going to need to dedicate some time, but I'm telling you it's well worth it. And I'll prove that value um, later down the road. But yeah, let's talk about upgrades. So what are people saying about WordPress upgrades? Um, there are so many updates, I can't keep up. So they're just coming at me left and right. How can I ever be ready? Um, WordPress upgrades always break my sites. Always. Hands down, they always break my sites. Um, most of the time, that is very false. If it is true, it usually means that someone's done something very bad, like modified the core WordPress files, which is a huge universal no-no. Um, that's probably the only rule that there is no exception to, just FYI. Um, how could I ever know what an update will do to my site? That's a very fair question. Um, you know, some functional upgrades can contain like 140 different changes. 
that's a lot of changes. How could you ever know what that's going to do to your site? Well, I'll show you here. Um, I don't need the upgrade because my site just works. So that's one of my faves. Um, I love hearing that from people. I guess that's kind of like saying, well, you know what? We all have cell phones. It's kind of like saying, I don't want to update my, my iPhone because my site just works. But if any of you have tried that strategy, very quickly you will not be able to start downloading new apps, things will start, stop working, you'll run into bugs that were actually fixed with the new version. So, you know, that's an interesting one, but uh, it's just not, it's not a real reason. Um, and then I always stay one version behind so they can work out the bugs. Uh, I love that one too. That's, uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, I don't, I, I can't, I mean, there's so many crazy analogies that would kind of stay that way. I don't want to upgrade my pacemaker because I want to stay one back so I can work out the bugs. But um, yeah, this is, I mean, this, is, this is a lot of the feedback I've heard. I'd say by far, probably th these five kind of just comments represent probably about 70% of really all the reasons people have said why they can't um, upgrade WordPress. Um, and you know, what it, what it kind of boils down to is when you've got these thoughts in your mind, you get what I like to call button anxiety. Um, you don't want to push that upgrade button. You're very afraid. You're, you know, you're, I mean, you're literally those things that I just put up, they're racing through your mind. What is it going to do to my site? It's always going to break my site. I don't know what is going to happen. And that's a real thing. I mean, button anxiety is real. Believe me, I'm, you know, I, I've talked to tons of customers who have it. Um, and, but usually it's, it's not just because of the button. Um, this quote over here is one of my favorites when it kind of comes, it has nothing to do about, with WordPress, but I found it and it kind of works. For every external struggle, there's an internal struggle. Look inside first. So, I mean, the struggle is real, that's for sure. If you think about, um, if you have the mindset that every time I upgrade, it's going to break my site, well, that means that you're going to have to do more work after the fact. And most likely, the reason you started your site was because it's part of a business. And that business probably has a completely other thing to do. So, you know, you could be working on a marketing campaign to get more sales for your business, or you could be getting ready for your WordPress upgrade. That, in some people's mind, that's a no-brainer. I'm doing the marketing, right? I'm just going to make sales. Who cares about my website right now? I got to get these sales going. Um, you know, the struggle is real, guys. There's, there's trade-offs to be made, and a lot of the times, when people don't make an informed trade-off, that's where that button anxiety comes into play, right? They don't know what they're getting into, so it's like, you know, is the trade-off, I can't do my marketing campaign for a day, for a week, for a month? How long am I going to be, you know, stuck fixing my site? Um, and, you know, it, it's real. Everything here is real. But what I'm going to do here um, in the rest of this kind of presentation is give you a five-step plan for how, when it's time to push that button, you know exactly what's going to happen and you know what trade-offs you might have to make. Um, and then you can make your informed decision. And as my wife will tell you, I love to make informed decisions. Anyways, let's get started with what is an upgrade. Um, so, you know, I, I, I found myself making this presentation and I said, you know what, I bet a lot of people don't understand the full upgrade kind of the world, right? And which makes a lot of sense because when I started WP Engine, I sure didn't understand it. I was like, what do you mean there's this, there's this? Um, and this is, this right here is one of the real big reasons why people say there are so many updates I can't keep up. And I'll show you why. So there are three kinds of upgrades. Uh, the first, and this is, this is the scary one, right? This is the one that really kind of could break your site, and this is the one that you got to get ready for, and I'll show you how. It's a feature or function upgrade, um, and it's an upgrade that does just that. It adds or removes features and, and functionality. So something that was working before might not work the same way, so your site might kind of not work in that way. There's lots of different things that can go on in one of these. Um, I promise you the WordPress community is not trying to break things on purpose just so you have to go fix them. Um, it's always for the greater good, um, and there's usually a lot of context around the changes that I'm going to show you kind of how you can get those and understand more. So that's the scary one. The next kind is a maintenance upgrade. Um, so this is an upgrade that fixes bugs. It does not add or remove features or functionality. And this is what you call a point or dot release. So if you look at, like right now, we're on version 4.2.3. Um, so the last number is what changes in a maintenance um, kind of release. So 4.2.x. And then the third kind is a security upgrade. Um, and this is a hot topic right now. A security update just came out this last week. Um, so it, it's an upgrade that closes security vulnerabilities. It does not add or remove features or functionalities unless the functionality itself is vulnerable. 
So that one right there, that happened this week, right? WordPress released the security update. It was to do with a cross-scripting site vulnerability. Um, and what they did was they changed the way short codes worked in WordPress. Now, that broke thousands of sites. Now, to be fair, there are millions of WordPress sites. So we're talking about it broke a very small amount. I think at WP Engine, out of like 300,000 sites, I think we saw maybe 15 customers come in and say, whoa, this broke my site. So um, you can kind of win the lottery in that case. Um, but the thing is, it still was a vulnerability, right? Like, yeah, it may have broke. And it, when I say break their site, it didn't like take the whole site down. Like something didn't work. This form didn't work or this slider didn't work or something like that. So it's not like your whole website was down. Um, but the thing is, that's a trade-off that you should be comfortable making. Um, you want a secure site. W which is worse? Your contact us form doesn't work for a week while you know somebody fixes it, or your whole site gets hacked and I mean, you know, your site's down, it's, it's malicious, it, it, Google tags it as malware and you lose all your SEO, like, that is catastrophic. And if you think of a big business, that is absolutely unacceptable. That can never happen. Um, so the big enterprise customers at WP Engine love that we do automatic security upgrades as soon as they're released. Um, because they want, because as soon as that security upgrade does get released, there are thousands of jerks out there that figure out what the vulnerability is, and then they script it, and then they just tear across the internet, trying to find sites that are vulnerable, and then they go and take them over. And I mean, that's dumb, but it's the world we live in. So those security upgrades are really important. Those are also point or dot releases. Um, just like I said, the one released this week, 4.2.3. The three is what changed, we were on 4.2.2. .2. All right, so now you have an understanding of what kind of upgrades there are out there, which ones are scary and which ones aren't. Um, I'll tell you that kind of at the end of this, you should be, when a maintenance or security upgrade is released, you should be like jumping for joy because you know that one, your site's gonna get more secure, or two, there are bugs that WordPress fixed um, and things are gonna get faster and more efficient. So let's talk about uh, kind of how the upgrade process works before it ever hits your site and is kind of ready for the button push. So you've got core contributors. These are the amazing people who really don't get paid um, that are just working on WordPress core all the time, making it better, including functionality, you know, building things, making it more secure. Um, then you've got the community, that's all y'all and myself. Um, and we are saying things like, whoa, we really want native ability to do custom fields in WordPress, right? And if enough people are saying that, well, the core contributors are gonna go build that, right? Because it's, you know, they're building for the community. And when they do that, it, it becomes a beta release. Um, and that little N means, because there's multiple versions, so there's like beta one, beta two, beta three. Um, multiple betas can happen before it kind of goes on to the next set where you've got your beta, and then awesome people in the community and the core contributors, they all test it. They, they kind of you know, update staging versions of their sites and they test it and then they file bug reports. They're like, whoa, hey, this doesn't work, this doesn't work, this doesn't work. Um, so they find all these bug reports and then once the WordPress community and the core contributors and the foundation feels like, all right, we're good, there are no more bugs, this is what we want, we've got all these features into it, it becomes a release candidate. And a release candidate is what, it, basically that's WordPress saying to the world, all right, this is done, we think. Everybody go test it as much as you can, and if, you, if we find any bugs, we'll fix them, but we really think this is good to go, and hey, if we don't hear anything back in probably a couple weeks, we're shipping it as a real upgrade. All right, so there's kind of your, uh, how, how does an upgrade become an upgrade kind of thing? Like, the, remember back in the day, like, uh, how does a bill become a law? I'm just a bill, right? So this is, I'm just an upgrade. Nobody remembers that? Wow, I'm just a kid, I guess. Okay, good, all right, one, two. Whew. All right, cool. So um, with that, I wanna get to kind of a, this is near and dear to me. Um, I, I alluded to it about upgrading your iPhones and everything, but maintenance is a must, right? And this shouldn't be a new topic to anybody. Um, who, who owns a house? Raise your hand. Who owns a house here? Oh, you, lots of us. Would you let your house do that? If you knew that you had a hole in a, you know, in a wall or in a pipe, would you just go, well, I, I don't, I don't wanna fix it, I don't, I don't have enough time, right? Well, that's not true because your house is very important to you and so you would never let it get that way. I'm willing to bet that just the same amount, if not more, own a car. Right, you would never let your car do that and then it just broke on the side of the road and 
you know, people are like, hey, do you have a car? And you're like, of course I do. It's over off, you know, 240 just on the side of the road. Uh, it doesn't work, but I have one. That's, that's like what you're doing to your website. You're like, yeah, I have a website. Oh, cool, is it up to date? Is it safe? Is it secure? Well, no, 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 it just sits there and, you know, it's all weird, but it's cool. Like, I have a website. That's not, that's, no business wants to hear that, right? How, how many of you all know that guy? The guy who just won't fix his computer, instead he just straps on a fan to the side and just runs it, right? So I, I'm guilty. In college, I had a Pentium 3 laptop and a, a, afterwards, I'm half guilty. Afterwards, they realized that Pentium 3s can't ever go into laptops because they overheat. But if I wanted to use my laptop, I literally had to put a box fan on my lap and then the computer on top of it. Otherwise, it would overheat in about 25 minutes. So it was crazy. So, hey, I'm guilty of it too. But then I kind of realized, well, the computer is really, really important to me, so I bought a new one. Um, and then, I mean, I'm sorry if you have a boat because, uh, you know, you're paying a lot of money for it, but you would never let a hole in your boat go, right? Somebody's like, hey, man, you got a boat? Of course I do. Half of it's above water. We can sit on it and fish. No big deal. Like, that's not a thing. Guys, we're laughing at this, but this is exactly what people are doing to their websites. And in some cases, their website is their livelihood. So forget the fact that a boat is just something for fun, unless you're like a fisherman or a shrimper, you know, and that is your livelihood, in which case they would never let their boat do that. But y'all are doing that with your websites, and it's, it's your number one source of income sometimes. So maintenance is a must. Now, if you do that, here's what you get. You get a well-oiled machine. You've got more horsepower. It's as fast as possible. It is tuned perfectly, so efficient. You've got every bug fix that WordPress has to offer, so it's running smooth. All the options, feature rich, right? Things, you know, I, don't, I can't even tell you how many times people are like, wow, I really wish WordPress did this. And then we kind of look in their site and we're like, well, it does, you just did an upgrade. It can do it, just push the upgrade button, you're gonna be able to do it. People don't understand, you get all the options. And then, best part is you get that fancy car alarm. Right? If someone even looks at your car, it goes, burr, 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 burr. Um, you know, you're nice and secure. Your site's not getting hacked, right? And then hopefully you're on a managed WordPress host and then their security's rock solid and then, hey, you're good. You don't even have to think about it. So it's really easy for me to get up here and kind of explain to you, hey, here's what it looks like. Here's, you know, here's the American dream, right? No big deal, go do it. Um, but it's not easy to go do it. Uh, I've had lots of customers who have said like, well, how, how can I do that? Like, I understand that, that's right on, on paper. You are hundred percent right. And I agree with you, but how can I ever be ready for all that? So that's really what this, the rest of this presentation is about. It's the reason I created this was I want to go to as many WordCamps as I can and give you guys a five step way to be ready for WordPress upgrades so that you can say you're driving that well old machine. So let's dig into that. So step one, get to know your site. So there's a lot of things here. So you, you are free to write down if you want. You can take pictures of slides, people do that too. But I'll also be posting the slides, so just in case you don't wanna do all that. But anyways, step one, get to know your site. So this is important. A lot of people don't know their site. They think they do, but they don't. And it starts with cataloging your plugins. So you just, it's real easy. You just go ahead and check out all the plugins. You can go to the plugins page and you could actually just copy and paste right into like Excel, right? You list each plugin inside of something like Excel or Numbers or Open Office Sheets or whatever you want to use. And then you rank them. You make a column called Rank, and you rank them high, medium, low in respect to the criticality to your site. So what that means is, if you're running, um, let's say you're selling hair bands, right? You make the best hair band in the world and you sell them on your site. So a plugin like WooCommerce is probably a high criticality because it does your sales. But a plugin like uh, a Retina plugin that makes sure that your images are in Retina when a Retina MacBook goes to it, don't kid yourself, that's not a high priority, right? If the Retina plugin stopped working today, would your business fail? Would your site stop doing its job? No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't be as nice, I agree, but it's not high criticality. And don't fool yourself. Stay, stay true to this because if you call everything high, it just means more work in the end. But if you're, if you're real and upfront about it, it's, it's gonna be a lot better. Place a few sentences of notes um, on the front end functionality. Uh, it's real easy. I'll go through a whole example with one of my sites and then provide exact instructions for how to reproduce the functionality. So it might, you know, if it's WooCommerce, it might be something like, 
order a product, right? And make sure it actually does it and you get an email as a site owner and everything like that. Um, but let's, let's do it, right? Talk is cheap, let's do it. This is my site, this is my wedding site that I built. Um, I'll tell you what, when we first, uh, when me and my wife got engaged and we knew we had a male site, uh, one day I come home from work and she's like, I built us a wedding site on Wix. And I was like, what the f No, They're like, come on, I work for a WordPress company. Like, we can't build our site on Wix. Everybody at work that's going to the wedding is going to make fun of me. And so, I mean, she obliged. And, uh, you know, that, this is the one win I got. She got to pick the flowers and the cake and the, everything. But I got to pick the website platform, guys. So that's a pretty big win for me. Um, so here it is. All right, so we'll go down real quick. This is all the plugins that I run on this site. Um, it starts with a Kismet, which is not even activated. Um, a Kismet is the best way of mitigating comment spam. Um, we haven't turned comments on on the website, but I kept it there just in case I do. But boom, a Kismet isn't even activated. So low priority, right off the bat, right? Contact Form 7. So what Contact Form 7 does for my site is it's a Contact Us page where friends and family can contact us if they have questions about the wedding or questions about the venue or questions about anything. Um, since everybody that we invited, we knew, um, I know they have either me or my wife's cell phone, so if Contact Form 7 didn't work, I probably wouldn't be that worried about it. They could call me, um, they, you know, everyone knows how to get a hold of me, so I'm, I'm gonna call that low, right? The, func the functionality of the site, which is kind of for the wedding and the RSVP and stuff, that still works if that plugin doesn't work, so it's low. Um, then we've got Layer Slider, um, so all that does is on the home page, it's got, um, it's got a real easy, it just floats through and it just shows pictures. It just literally just scrolls through the engagement photos and stuff. Um, once again, my wife might call that high. Uh, I'd call it low, but hey, happy wife, happy life. So I'm gonna meet in the middle. We'll call it medium. Um, so the layer slider is medium. Uh, love it. So that literally just adds like a like it link, like on Facebook, but it adds a love it link to all my pages. Um, I am gonna call that low. Uh, RSVP and wedding invitation. So we asked people to RSVP via the website and that's an important one. So that's high for me, for sure. That is a high priority plugin. Um, Vantam push menu, um, it just implements a different way to navigate. So it's the navigation drawer, the UI pattern on Android. So I'm gonna put that low as well. Um, I'm not really worried if someone can't use my wedding website on their mobile and it's just a navigation thing, like the site will work. Um, and then the last one is good old WP Retina 2X. So make your images crisp and beautiful on Retina displays. Um, once again, I am going to call that low. Uh, it's all right. If the Retina doesn't work, my site still really does its job, which is getting people to RSVP. All right, there you have it. We've cataloged. We've ranked them high or low. Um, I did the few sentences on what the functionality is. Now let's do the how do you test them. So really easy. Contact Form 7. All right, you just fill out the contact form and make sure I, as the site owner, get a copy of whatever I put in there. Nice and easy. Layer slider, I just go to the home page and is the slider there? Really easy to test. Love it, I just go to any page I want and click the love it button and the love it count should go up by one digit. Very easy. RSVP and wedding invitation. I just use the RSVP field and make sure that I, as the site owner, get the email with all the details that I put in. Vantam push menu, oh, it's low, I don't even care. I'm not even gonna test it, but I, all I do is go to it on an Android machine. And then WP Retina, um, since that might be actually important to some of you, you just go to your site with a Retina MacBook, inspect the element, it should say Retina. Um, there you go. So, we just built the spreadsheet for my site. Probably took us 10 minutes, I think, and I threw in some fun anecdotes, I hope. Um, but yeah, there you go, 10 minutes, here's my site. I'm, I'm done with step one, if you would, um, part of step one. So you do the same thing for themes and custom functionality. Um, what's nice is my theme, all it does is give me a set of colors. So my theme, I'd probably say is medium, um, and I just make sure that my color scheme that's there already is still there. Um, that's how I test it. Um, you rank them. You place a few sentences, provide the exact instructions. Um, custom functionality is an interesting one, guys. Because WordPress is so popular, lots of people create custom things inside of it, which is awesome, right? I love it. It, it, it still amazes me to see all the cool things people do with WordPress at, at WP Engine. Um, but it's important because usually that custom functionality, um, because it's not a plugin, it usually means that it, it kind of is really custom. 
And so it's something that you want to pay a lot of attention to here. So make sure that if it's something a dev built for you, ask him to fill out that one section of the sheet for your custom functionality, right? And then that way now you know going forward, but really go to whoever built it and ask them to fill that out. Not, not a ton of first time sites will have custom functionality, but as you continue to grow your WordPress business, um, you know, you'll have more and more. So step two, get to know your devs. So this is important. Um, it could be the devs you hire, or it could be the devs that work on your plugins. And so for kind of the first part of step two is for the high critical plugins and themes. These are the ones that we said were high. So if you remember, I only had one, um, which was the RSVP plugin. You contact that dev or their support team. Um, now, I've had questions about, oh, how do I contact them? So what's cool is if it's a big plugin, they probably have a website just for that plugin. Like Woo, WooCommerce, they, they have Woo themes, they have a website. You can contact their support from there. Maybe it's a smaller plugin, um, so they don't have their own website or anything. You just go to the plugin on the WordPress.org repo. So you just search in plugins and find it. And WordPress requires that you have a support tab um, on that page. And that tab tells you how to get in touch with the support team or the devs. So every single plugin in the world will have it. Um, so that's good. Um, yeah, then you let them know the specific functionality you're using, right? Um, and this is because you kind of talk to them about, well, is that functionality like the main part of it? So if I contacted the contact form seven guy and said, hey, I'm using your plugin for forms. Okay, well, good news, that's the main functionality. So that's good because I would think that if he's gonna keep that plugin up to date, well, forms are gonna continue to work since that's the main part. However, if you're using something like Yoast SEO, and you're only using like one of the functions to make mm, custom tags or custom post types, um, that's probably maybe kind of a side function, right? The plugin's called Yoast SEO, so it's probably the SEO part that's the main part. So open the dialogue and ask him. Say, hey, I'm using this functionality. Is this core part of the plugin, or is it more of an add-on? Um, and then figure out what the future of that functionality looks like. Um, there's a chance that if you said to Yoast, hey, I'm using the custom post type, what, uh, you know, hey, is that something you guys are, are actively developing? What's the future look like? They're gonna be, he's gonna be real honest with you and he's gonna say, well, you know, I don't know. That, that thing is kind of an afterthought. We made it just because we kind of wanted to put a lot of things in this to make it even more, you know, attractive for people to download. Um, but I guess if it broke, I don't know if we'd fix that. We might just remove it. Ooh, red flag, right? You're using that for a high critical function of your plug, of your site. So that's a red flag. Um, and what you do when you come into one of those red flag situations, and really you should just do them for all the high criticality plugins, but you find at least one alternative to each of those plugins. It's not hard, so if I was doing Contact Form 7, uh, Gravity Forms would be the, you know, the next one. Um, for every one plugin type there is out there, there's usually about 10, and sometimes there's hundreds. So it's not hard to find that alternative. Just find it and just note it. Just note it in that sheet, real easy. You don't have to go research it or anything. Just kind of find it and say, okay, this is good. All right, so get to know your devs. That's awesome. So now we have, a, we have an existing relationship with our developers who develop our plugins. We've asked them some very important questions and we understand where that piece of functionality kind of lives inside of their ecosystem, right? Now, this is the fun part. You get to know the future. So if you go to wordpress.org slash blog, there's their blog. It's very, very active. They, it's so active that they split it up into like seven different categories. And one of those categories is releases. And that is where they blog post about betas and release candidates and real releases. Now, there's only like, hmm, usually about six or seven of those a quarter. So it's not gonna fill up your inbox. You're not gonna spam. It's not gonna be a ton and you just read it. And it's not like you really have to do anything out of it, maybe. But, so you subscribe to the releases, right? The first kind of post they do is a beta post. This talks about when a beta is ready. So if you remember how an upgrade becomes an upgrade, um, a beta then is tested and bugs are found, um, sometimes multiple times, beta one, beta two, beta three. So you just kind of keep an eye on that and you read it. Um, if in your reading of the beta plugin, you see something that you maybe kind of sets off a little alarm bell, you're like, whoa, this functionality that's changing might really impact this plugin. Contact the devs, tell them. Say, hey, I was checking out this beta release post and I saw that you know, this is happening and I'll give you a great example actually. So I, I have a beta release post on the next slide. Then you identify if any custom functionality may be impacted. So if so, 
it might be a good idea to have whoever built that test that beta with that custom functionality. Remember, custom functionality, while rare, is usually very important to your site. So you kind of want to take an even more proactive approach around that. Now you have an idea of what is coming and how the site may be impacted. So here's a beta post, right? So I'll just read it real quick. Um, so they say, stuff is still in development. We don't recommend you run it on a production site. Never run it on a production site. 4.3 um, is due out next month, but to get there, we need your help testing what we've been working on. So menus, you can now be managed with the customizer, which allows you to live preview changes you're making without changing your site for visitors until you're ready. Cool, so it sounds like they're, bu they're building in a way to preview menus and customize them. That's awesome because sometimes you gotta install a plugin to do that. So this is a great thing because now WordPress is about to get rid of a plugin you might have. You can just say, okay, I don't need that plugin anymore because the functionality it does is now built into WordPress. Now you have one less plugin, which means one less code base that can become insecure, one less plugin that you have to test when getting ready for upgrades, and one less plugin that you have to just maintain and know and, and understand, right? So that's great. I love it when we're, I wish I could run zero plugins. That would make me so happy, because that just means every single thing I'm doing in WordPress is supported by the whole community. That'd be awesome. So it's always good when something gets rid of a plugin. Um, let's jump to the third bullet. It says, we put a lot of work into better passwords throughout WordPress. Now WordPress will limit the lifetime of password resets, no longer send passwords via email, and generate a suggest secure password for you. Try it out and let us know what you think. So one of the most common reasons people create WordPress sites is a membership site, right? You have some content that you think is so like, cool that you only want to give it to members. Right? And so membership plugins kind of keep track of all those people and they, you, know, you can split them into different roles and whatnot. But one thing that's very kind of custom about membership plugins is they create users over and over and over and over again. Well, what do users have to do when they create themselves? They have to set a password. So, ooh, this would be a red flag in my mind if I ran a membership site. I would probably contact my membership dev and say, hey, guy or girl, what do you think about this new beta release and better passwords? Like, oh, you know, I have some really finicky users and they don't like to set like crazy long passwords. What is this gonna do to them, right? And so hopefully, if they're a real good dev shop, they already knew this was coming. Shoot, they might even help build it to make their plugin even easier, right? But maybe they didn't, so they're like, oh, hey, thank you, user, this is awesome. We're gonna test it out. And then they come back to you and say, oh boy, there were bugs. Sure enough, this really hurt the plugin. So we are now, we've got months of a head start. We're gonna fix this, we're gonna make sure it's fixed by the time the real upgrade comes. Or they come back and go, nope, no problem, doesn't matter, we are already hooking into the right thing and all that still works, so we're good to go, right? But hey, that's anxiety, right? That's button anxiety right there that you just washed away. Very nice. So um, I didn't take a picture of the whole post, but it's, there's like two more bullets after this. So it's not long. You just kind of give it a read, you know, do it at night, you know, wh whatever. You don't have to do it immediately. You know, it's not an upgrade coming right now. So second part of step three, subscribe to the releases. Yep, yep. When a release candidate post is made. So if you remember, release candidate means WordPress thinks they are ready. They're like, hey, we're ready to go. This is going to be an upgrade. If nobody says anything, it's coming in a couple of weeks. All right, sweet. That's for real, right? Contact your devs. Definitely contact them. When release candidate is out, the, WordPress makes a call out to, to theme and plugin developers and says, hey, test this release candidate. So all of your devs should be testing it already. So contact them and say, hey, how's the release candidate uh, testing going? How, you know, hey, here's my functionality. If you remember, I contacted you before. How is it gonna play, is it gonna play nice with that? You're getting ahead of everything. You've got weeks now before really an upgrade will happen. Probably a little more, just because some bugs might be found. Um, but man, you're getting way ahead of the game now, guys. And you're forcing the devs, if for some reason they're not, you're making them test it, which is really good. They should be. Um, then you create a staging site. And this is awesome. So I, I, I just saw a lot of faces go blank. So if you listen to what me and other people in the WordPress community say, which is, Make sure you're on a managed WordPress platform. Doesn't matter which one, because they basically all have it. You have one click ability to make a staging site. And it just makes like an exact replica of your site, and you can test it, and it never impacts your production site. It is like the best thing to happen to websites since, I don't know, probably the internet. Um, but this is good. This is really cool, guys. So 
find a good managed WordPress provider. They will have this one click. It's super easy. And then install the WordPress beta tester plugin. So I know that's a long name. I don't know why they call it that. Well, it's a functional name, I guess. But WordPress beta tester. This is the official uh, plugin from WordPress, the foundation, that allows you to install beta or release candidate upgrades to your site. So we've made a staging site. We've installed this cool uh, plugin. And then we did the three clicks it takes to upgrade to the release candidate. All right, so now, this is, high, this is high tech stuff, guys. I can tell you that there are really good companies out there that don't even do this to their sites yet. Um, so you're already way ahead of the game. Here's real quick what a release candidate uh, post looks like. So we've made more than 140 changes since releasing beta four a week and a half ago. Release candidate means we think we're done. But with millions of users and thousands of plugins and themes, it's possible we've missed something. We hope to ship WordPress 4.2 on Wednesday, April 22nd, but we need your help to get there. So this is the call. This is just, you know, they're not even going through all the stuff. It's just like, hey, call to action time here, guys. We want you to start testing it. And that's what you're about to do. So it's time to test. Here we go. On your staging site, update all the plugins and themes. Now, you shouldn't have, to have, you shouldn't have any to update because it's a big rule. Always keep your plugins and themes updated. Right? So for the same reason we're about to keep core updated is because security, functionality, features, yada, yada. But smiley face, because everybody does have to update some, but you shouldn't have to. Um, execute the steps to recreate the functionality you documented there earlier. So the document that we put together, go through there. The last column was, how do you replicate this? So just go through those steps. Shouldn't take you more than a, I mean, a couple hours at the most. Like, if you have 40 plugins, you should really reevaluate your site. Oh, that's too many. But yeah, you know, if you have a reasonable amount of plugins, two hours, right? That's not bad for kind of the peace of mind you're about to get. Document each result and specifics about any failures. And then execute any back-end functions that are unique to your site. So I know this is a little ambiguous. And man, it's a little vague. Um, Execute any backend functions that are unique to your site. You don't have to go make a post. You don't have to go make a menu, right? Those are things that have been done thousands of times to this release candidate. This is if you have something very custom that is on the back end. You want to go do it. We really don't worry about that much because back end functionality doesn't usually break, um, which is nice. But it's time to do that, right? It's time. For the most part, every single one of you on your first five sites, you won't have any of those. So it's no big deal. Um, hold on. Actually, let's do this then. So we'll take my site, and we'll run through this real quick, the steps. So if you remember, we had a Kismet. Don't have to do anything, because it's deactivated. Uh, we have the Love It button. So we go to any page. Literally, I'll just type it in, mesawedding.com, enter. Click a page. Click Love It. Boom, it increased by one. I just did that test, and it passed. Uh, I have the contact form. So I click the Contact Us button, and then I put in a contact, and I write, hey, Dustin, I'm testing my form. And I push Enter, and then bam. I wait and I get an email. OK, contact form's working. Uh, the RSVP. So I go to the RSVP and I pick and I say, oh, I'm bringing 10 people because I'm really dumb and I'm bringing my kids to a wedding and I'm coming to the rehearsal dinner and I'm coming to the ceremony and the reception. Go. OK, cool. I, as the site owner, just got an email and it said all that stuff I just put in it. Sweet, it still works. Um, what else? The Retina plugin. So I run a PC because I'm a dinosaur. Um, but I go to my wife and I go, hey, can you go to the wedding website on your Mac real quick, but the staging one? Um, and she goes, OK, I did. And I'm like, how's the slider look? And she's like, ooh, the slider looks good. OK, I already just tested the slider right there. So slider works. And then I'm like, hey, can you just inspect one of these pictures real quick? She right clicks, and she says inspect element. And then I go, and I read, and the element says retina. And I go, perfect. The retina's working too. Thanks, hon. Um, and then we're done. I think I just did them all. I just did all the stuff. I just tested it. And I mean, I know I talked about testing it. So let's just say, for you know, whatever, argument's sake, 30 minutes. Let's say it took me 30 minutes to do that. That's not bad. 30 minutes to know that when it's time to upgrade, everything's going to work, that's, that's good stuff. And so now it's step four. It's go time. How are the results? If there are no issues, skip to test five. If there are issues, let's dig in. So if the issue is with a medium or low criticality plugin, you have a lot of options. And those options are, you can do nothing. So I told you, right, if the Retina plugin didn't work, what would I do? Probably nothing. I don't care. 
And I probably would. I wouldn't even worry about it. I'd be like, whatever, blah. Uncle Dave doesn't need his retina plugin. Um, you can contact the plugin dev, find out what the time frame is for an update, let them know, hey, I was testing my site with the release candidate, and I noticed that the, uh, the images aren't showing up as retina. What, what do you think is going to happen there? Like, you know, are you going to fix that? What's your time frame? Yada, yada. Um, if they're like, oh, yeah, no, we've been testing it too. We totally understand. We're going to make an upgrade in, we're, we should have an upgrade like one week after the upgrade comes. OK, cool. If it's just a functional upgrade, which is what we're testing for, um, hey, maybe you wait. Maybe you wait that week. Because it's like, ah, I'd rather have the Retina plugin work. So I'll just wait a week and wait for the upgrade to happen. And then I'll go ahead and uh, make it happen, right? Or if they're like, I don't know, this seems really hard. We've got a lot of other plugins, and we care about them more. And so I'm not, I don't know, we might not even get to it for a few months. OK, in that case, you probably want to upgrade and just blah, right? Oh, well. I'll wait. Whenever they do it, they do it. That's no big deal to me. It's the Retina. Um, or you can replace it. So good news is there's like 100 Retina plugins out there. So <laughs> I'd probably just go find one, um, maybe look at the support for it real quick and just make sure it says, like, there's not 100 people screaming, oh, this breaks in the new release candidate. And as long as that's not the case, boom, I just go and replace it. Easy peasy. Take you like two minutes to replace it. So, you know, hey, medium or low, you've got some real options here, right? And all of these options, these literally are your trade-offs, right? All of them. How long is it going to be? What am I, what am I not going to do because I want to do one of these, right? It, hey, if you do nothing, then, you know, there is no trade-off, right? You can keep working on your business. But if you replace the functionality, maybe that's harder. I don't know. But you're making that informed decision, which, as I said, is my fave. So what if it's a high criticality plugin? Now, this will happen one day. There's no doubt in my mind. It'll happen one day in your life. You'll, have, you'll be testing this, and ooh, the high plugin doesn't work. Oh, boy, this is a problem. First thing you do, it's basically the only thing you do. You contact those devs. Contact them immediately and be like, hey, listen, this plugin is super important to my business. I run my whole site off of it. Um, you know, I built my whole site around it, and it doesn't work in the release candidate. What are you, you going to do? What's going on? You know, tell me. Just tell me. Tell me everything. Tell me you have a fix. Tell me what's going to happen. Then they're going to. They're going to be very open about it. They're going to tell you, well, maybe we're not going to fix it. And that's bad, right? And so maybe you can't upgrade. Or maybe you replace it. Um, or maybe they say, yeah, yeah, no, we're way on top of it. This is our number one priority. We're going to make sure we don't have an ETA yet, but we hope to have one soon. You know? And then you're like, OK, I'm just going to set a reminder to check back next week and ask them if they have an ETA. Um, it's just kind of the due diligence with following up on them, making sure. But it's, but it's making an informed decision. So here, I just, I just added this slide this morning. Um, this is notes from a plugin developer. Um, and this is based off of the 4.2.3 release that I said just released this week. And so I'll read it real quick. We are updating the views plugin today so that we resolve all short codes before passing to WordPress to process content. This is a straightforward change, which takes us one day to complete. Ooh, that's awesome. So they, they made that post. There's a chance you don't even have to contact them because devs are so ahead of the game that they're right there, right? You're like, oh, sweet, man. These guys are the greatest. They go on to say, which is kind of important because this is kind of WordPress at large, um, would have been great to receive a heads up about an upcoming change in WordPress so we could do this change on time. So he's literally telling WordPress, hey, I would have loved for you to tell me this. Now, WordPress says, well, it was a security issue. And so there's, you know, that's really tricky. Um, but I can tell you that that right there, that sentence right there, that's echoed from a lot of the plugin developers that broke with this last update. Um, they're all saying, hey, we want to be more in tune with you guys. We want to serve our customers better. So they go on saying, we received a huge amount of support requests through this. That's people following this plan, right? Saying, hey, it's broke. Why? Why? Tell me. Um, but this isn't the issue. We can deal with a wave of support issues. This time it wasn't our fault, but sometimes it is. Now, I would argue that it was their fault because they coded it improperly. I've read a lot about this issue, and they kind of, everybody who didn't break was like, why would you ever code it that way, anyways? But there's 100 ways to code stuff, so who am I? I'm not a dev, so I'm not passing judgment. Um, they say, what worries us, as mentioned above, is seeing our clients, folks who build WordPress sites um, for a living, losing their faith in the system. They feel like the system sees them as little ants and not as humans. People don't like seeing their problems being dismissed. That's great feedback, right? I want to tell that to WordPress every day. Many of them run hundreds of sites. They cannot afford to stop everything and fix content on so many sites, especially not if they are currently away for their family vacation. <sighs> Always have a backup plan if you go on vacation. Um, 
What others have asked here, and I would like to ask too, is to set up a mechanism that allows WordPress core developers to privately communicate such upcoming issues with plugin developers. And in the very end, it says, we are your partners. So here you go, guys. This is a dev who wants to do all of that for you. They are here saying, I want to make sure my plugins are ready. I want to make sure that I don't let my customers suffer. This is the kind of symbiotic relationship that we are building right here in this whole plan. This is awesome. I wish every plugin developer was this awesome. So step five. Remember, we skipped here if you had no failures. Step five, you got a worry-free upgrade coming. This is exciting. Once all your issues have been resolved, you will have a much under better understanding of your site. You will know it so much better than like your friend will know their site. And that's actually cool. But take it from me, a nerd who runs a Windows laptop. Um, you won't fear the upgrade button. That is probably the best thing that's going to come out of that. I mean, I had a guy on the phone. He was crying because he told me he had no way to get his 10 sites ready. And I said, well, what do you have to do? Maybe I can help. And he said, I have no idea what I have to do. You won't fear the upgrade plugin, the button. You won't cry to me on the phone one day, which is great. I don't want any of you crying unless it's happy because you won't fear it anymore. Um, that's a big deal, guys. Can you imagine if I'd have told that guy a month before, hey, I've got a five-step plan and you won't have to call me crying. He'd be like, I'd have never called you crying. And I'm like, yeah, you would. He wouldn't have to do that. Like, he would probably feel so much better because of that. And I mean, I would too. You'll be ready for any maintenance or security upgrades that are released. No testing needed. And those are the ones that are the majority. One functional upgrade a quarter is currently what WordPress is doing. So you only have to do this once a quarter. But there's usually like three or four maintenance and security upgrades a quarter. So that means four out of five upgrades, you're just ready. You're good to go. And if you're on a managed platform like WP Engine, we're going to upgrade it for you. And you just sit back and relax and you'll never have to worry. You can keep making those marketing campaigns. You can keep driving sales to your business. Keep doing what you love. Because I promise you, not any one of you in the audience started a WordPress site because you love to upgrade it. That's not a thing. You did it because you love that whatever you're building your site about. And then you will have a game plan for the next functional upgrade. That's really important because now you never fear any more upgrades because you're equipped. You know what you're going to do. You're ready to go. And what's that going to do? So preparing for next time is awesome. If you documented everything you did, so everything we just did right here, this process will take half the time in the future because you will know your site already. You will know how to do that testing. You will start getting smarter about what you think may be impacting those beta and release candidate posts. So what took, remember I said 30 minutes, right? What took us 30 minutes will take us 15 minutes next time. And if you tell me you don't have 15 minutes to make sure your site stays maintained, well, you better sell your house, sell your boat, sell your car, sell your computer, because you don't have time for anything. If you manage lots of sites, the testing plans and communication to devs gets easier because as you start to build more and more sites, you find plugins you like. So every time you want to make a contact form, you use Contact Form 7. And then, hey, you have 100 sites, but you're only sending one email to the devs going, hey, contact form. Like, it just gets easier, right? It, it, it does. And then um, testing is the same too. You probably only need to test one of those sites for Contact Form 7, not all 100. Because, I mean, it works one way in one, it probably works the same in the other. So you're going to cut it down even more. Ensure you plan your time accordingly, though, because if you don't just have one site, maybe you have 10. Well, 10 times, let's say 20 minutes, right? OK, it's 200 minutes. So now we're talking about two and almost a half hours. So that's, I mean, that's a good chunk of time, but it's not really a ton for a quarter, right, to make sure all your sites are ready, all your customers are happy, all your businesses are running. Um, but you just got to plan it. You got to make sure you plan it. Don't pack your schedule so jam-packed that you can't do the two and a half hours. And then following this plan takes time, but it also means a lot less surprises. I've given you lots of examples of why people, how people aren't surprised on this and why that's a good thing. But guys, it's like the best thing. Who, I mean, everyone hates bad surprises. All of us do. I hate, I hate it when I walk into my house and I'm like, oh man, that thing broke or, you know, oh, here's a bill that I didn't think was coming. We all hate those. If you could get rid of every bad surprise in your life, wouldn't that be awesome? Well, I can show you how to get rid of bad surprises in your WordPress site, which might be a lot of your life. I don't know. All right, that's it. I've talked enough. Who's got questions? Well, this is good. OK.
the staging site. If, yeah. What if you don't have WPN or any kind of a managing post? How do you do that? So I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, you should just, uh, it would take you hours to create a staging site from scratch. That alone should, rect should, should justify the cost of moving to a managed provider. So forget WP Engine. You can go to any of them. There are ones that are cheaper than WP Engine. You don't get as much, but you get staging sites, that's for sure. It's rule one to WordPress, guys. If you have a site that is at all critical to your life, you, it should be on a managed WordPress platform. I don't, want to, I don't want to tell you how to do this in two hours, right? Because it's not worth your time. It's not worth your time to do it, to make a staging site from scratch. It's not. Get yourself on a managed host. Because then there's a hundred other reasons too, by the way. <laughs> yeah? The reasons? Oh, absolutely. Oh my gosh, yeah, I give you a top hundred. Um, okay, so I think staging is probably, um, like, it's actually number two to me. But staging site is one of them. Oh, top three. Oh, the top three managed services. The, yeah, absolutely, sorry about that. Yeah, so um, I'm biased, so WP Engine is number one. Um, I would probably say, you know what, I'll just give you the, the first few. The ones that are, so there are big hosts that offer managed WordPress as one of their services, like GoDaddy, right? And it's cheap. However, I'm gonna steer you away from them because I think that a, 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 a company that only does WordPress is that much better at it. So WP Engine, all we do is WordPress. Pagely, all they do is WordPress. Pressable, all they do is WordPress. Now some of the ones that kind of do maybe just WordPress and a little more, Pantheon, SiteGround, Flywheel, those are some more. I would say that those three though, those are the ones that I really would suggest researching. Pan uh, WP Engine, Pagely, Pressable. Yes, oh, so, so, WP Engine, Pagely, just t take the word page and then add L-Y at the end, uh -huh. and then Pressable. I gotta press the button. The button is pressable. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about cost for a small company? As far as um, uh, like how much does a managed WordPress host cost? Yeah. So um, we have so at WP Engine. We have thirty plus thousand customers. Um, we have every, the whole gamut, all the way from the top, like the most expensive, all the way to literally people doing their wedding websites, right? Um, so for one site, just to do one site at WP Engine, it's uh, twenty nine dollars a month. But to do 10 sites, it's $100 a month. And then to do 25 sites, it's $250 a month. And then our enterprise packages start at 600 and go up from there. And then as much as you really want and think you need, uh, we'll give it to you. But um, it's awesome because I'll tell you what, maybe you make your first site somewhere else, but as soon as you've got four or five sites, the, the amount of efficiency that you will gain by going to like WP Engine is amazing. Because here's, here's the best part about it. All we do is WordPress. So we have over a thousand custom server rules just for WordPress. You will not be able to run WordPress faster anywhere else in the world. Um, and that alone, like if you just wanted to go stand up 10 sites on some just box somewhere, you'd have to figure those thousand out, which are, I mean, I would say impossible. We've done it over the last seven years, right? Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of what that is. Do you have a question or no? Are you saying hi? Oh, hi, just joking. Anybody else? Sure. Absolutely. And what else do they, what, why? I still don't understand why. Okay, all right, cool. So yeah, I digress. Anybody else have any questions about upgrades before I go into my spiel? All right, cool. So manage WordPress host. Here's the deal. They take care of everything that you don't like to do about with WordPress. They take care of it for you. Speed, so no more caching plugins. No more having to like tune all that stuff. It's all built into our network. It's all built in. Uh, the whole stack has speed in mind via caching, right? Security. So we upgrade your sites for you automatically. So your at least your core WordPress will stay up to date. And then we have so WP Engine. No, no other WordPress hosts have this yet. Um, but we have a smart algorithm that sits at our network layer that watches all the traffic that comes in and finds bad traffic and then learns and then blocks it. So we literally are staying so ahead of the game for you, it's not even funny, right? Scalability. So if your site has, let's say you get you know, 100 visitors a day, and then, man, you write a, a blog post that's so awesome and it goes viral and you get 10,000 visitors a day. Piece of cake at WP Engine. It's the server, the, the, your site isn't even gonna break a sweat. It's just gonna work 
You're going to be so happy that your big break finally happened and your site's still up. Because I'll tell you what, on these other places that aren't managed WordPress hosts, those suckers are going down and they're not there to help you. They don't know WordPress. They can't help you. They're just like, whatever, the server's up. Sorry, your site's down. Like, that's it. So speed, security, scalability, support. So... No, not at all, because you, you still have to make sure your site's ready. We're gonna do the upgrade for you, so the button pressing itself isn't done by you, but you still wanna make sure it's ready, but yeah. Um, and then support, so because we're only a managed WordPress host, we have over 100 support guys, they're all WordPress experts. When you have a big problem with your site, and you contact your host and go, I have no idea what to do, they're gonna go, well, neither do we. We don't know WordPress. What does WP Engine do? It helps. It, we might not be able to fix it because it might be in the code itself, right? Not the platform or whatever. But we're going to tell you exactly where to go to get it fixed. We're going to offer you suggestions, right? We might even fix it. Don't tell anybody that. We're not supposed to fix code. But we do it. We, we, I mean, when we see it, it's going to take two minutes. We'll just do it for you. Those people love our customers. They really do. Um, those, those are the four main reasons, the four S's. There's 100 more. Just go to WPEngine.com and start reading. All right, cool. All right, I think we're probably at time. Yeah, oh boy, I missed my wrap it up thing. I'm so sorry. All right, yeah, one more minute, that's it. So, cool, thanks guys so much. I really appreciate it. I'll be around if you have any questions or whatever. And look at this. Uh